Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm showcasing my multi-role Jack of all trades build, the Omni build. Uh, pistol tank, sniper, and AR headshot build all rolled into one. High survivability, high damage, all before the talents and procs are even active. Let me show you. So the Omni build is designed around the TDI card custom. Uh, but all three weapons are just as powerful and practical with this setup. Uh, I originally made this to tackle Heroic with the Pistolero modifier, but over time it evolved into what you see here. Uh, I started off with a couple armor rolls, uh, but quickly discovered they were completely unnecessary. As long as you're facing the enemy with a bulwark deployed, this guy right here, uh, you can absorb damage like a sponge. So... Uh, at base, with the card custom in hand, the Bulwark has uh, 9.7 million health. And that's before you ever pick up any memento stacks. Now, if you look at the screen right now, you'll see that it's sitting at 7.9. That's because the pistol is not currently in my hands. Let me show you how it changes. So, pistol's now in hand. Now we've got that additional skill tier because the pistol's in my hand. Oops. And there it is, 9.7 million health. Um, and then we're adding the Artificer, or Artificer, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it has a base of 44% uh, refresh. And so you're getting nearly half your shield health back uh, about every 9 seconds. I timed it closer to 10 seconds, but the skill refresh here says 9 seconds. We're just going to go off of that. <laughs> uh, the Tier 4 Bulwark is achieved with the Technician Specialization. We get that uh, one extra skill tier from that. Um, the, the Mementos Armor and Skill Cores right here. Uh, and the TDI card. So that's how we get it to... You'll see that it's sitting at Tier 4. All right. So I'd like to note here that the uh, the card must be in your hand uh, in order to gain that fourth tier. But it's a bit of a moot point since the only weapon your agent can use with the bulwark is the pistol, and it'll be automatically deployed when you pop the shield. Uh, for this build, the Artificer is meant to simply hang out on your backpack and buff the bulwark. Uh, at max memento stacks, the Artificer is going to refresh 56% of the shield health, and um, the bulwark is going to have just over 13 million health. Uh, add to that the 3% armor regen your agent receives from the memento. Uh, and you can see that this build has a ton of survivability. Um, because the engagement distance for a bulwark pistol build is literally point blank, uh, I wanted to take advantage of headshot damage over critical hit damage or chance. Uh, it's hard to miss when you're barrel stuffing. So let me go over all the individual, excuse me, all the individual pieces start off with the mask. We've got ourselves the punch drunk named Douglas and Harding piece. See that it's rolled to critical hit chance. We've got a headshot damage mod on there. Uh, its inherent attribute is the plus 20% headshot damage. For the chest, we're running the named chain killer. Uh, Walker and Harris chest piece. You can see we've got it rolled to headshot damage, critical hit damage, and a headshot damage uh, mod. Uh, this comes with the perfect headhunter talent. Uh, after you uh, kill an enemy with a headshot, your next weapon hit within 30 seconds deals an additional 150% of that killing blows damage. Damage is capped to 800% if of your weapon damage. This is raised to 1,250% if your headshot damage is greater than 150%. Now you don't need to run this with perfect headhunter. You can run this with regular headhunter as well. So you don't need the named version of this chest piece but you will want to run the walker chest piece in this slot. Uh, for the holster, we've got ourselves a Providence Defense. Uh, you get that 15% headshot damage, and you can see we have it rolled to headshot damage and critical hit damage. I'm sure you're detecting a trend here. For the backpack, we have the all-powerful Memento. Uh, you get those three core attributes, the weapon damage, the armor, and the skill tier. Uh, you can see that my expertise, I've expertised it to 15. Uh, that was before I realized that uh, investing expertise points into armor pieces is a complete waste. 
uh, but it's there. So I get an additional 15% of uh, its armor. It's a very small amount. But uh, so I've got a headshot damage mod on there, and then we've got the talent. Uh, if you, in case you're not familiar with the memento and how this functions, when you kill an enemy, it drops a trophy. It grants you both a long-term and a short-term buff, uh, depending on how many cores you have on your build. Uh, so the idea is to grab 30 of them, uh, and this will stay with you for about five minutes. I think that's 300 seconds is five minutes. And that ends up, when you have max trophies, you're sitting at 30% weapon damage, 30% skill efficiency, and 3% armor regeneration. Very strong. Uh, for the gloves, we're running the named contractor's gloves, everybody's favorite, best in slot. Uh, you get that LMG damage, which is completely useless on this particular build, but we get the damage to armor, which is the inherent attribute of this named piece, and then re-rolled headshot damage. For the knees, best in slot. Fox's Prayers uh, with the 10% rifle damage, which again doesn't do anything for this build. But we've got the uh, inherit 8% uh, damage to targets out of cover, along with another headshot damage. Uh, for the weapons, we've got the FAMAS with the Optimus Talent. Uh, for the mods on here, we've got the Critical Hit Chance Scope, got the Critical Hit Chance Laser. And then I've got the Omega 556 rifle suppressor on here to give us that extra stability, make it a little easier to land the headshots. You lose a little bit of range, but the idea behind using the FAMAS is for mid-range engagements. We're not trying to hit anything super far away. Uh, and for the up-close encounters, we've got the pistol. So uh, in the long-range encounters, we've got the Nemesis. Uh, its talent is the electromagnetic accelerator. Uh, and that's essentially your charging bullets. Um, if you've never played with the Nemesis, you have to hold the trigger and you'll notice a uh, charging visual aid that appears. And when it's at full charge, it's doing maximum amounts of damage. And this is the hardest hitting marksman rifle in the game, period. <laughs> so all that headshot damage, uh, that plays to the Nemesis sniper rifle strengths, obviously without any memento or headhunter stacks, the nemesis can one-shot an elite on solo heroic, on solo heroic with this build. Uh, and it only gets stronger from there. Uh, at full headhunter and memento stacks, the nemesis is doing over 44 million crit headshots uh, and can easily dispatch named targets with a single headshot. Kind of already went over the FAMAS. Uh, it's, you know, it's stable got high damage output, high rate of fire. It makes for a very forgiving weapon. Uh, it's essential when you're aiming for the head and you're likely to miss a few shots. Uh, now, uh, something I wanted to bring up is you can run the FAMAS with an 8x scope um, to beef up its headshot damage. Um, but playing with the scoped AR takes a little getting used to and the recoil will feel more pronounced. But the 8x zoom isn't so high that you can't hope to hit anything up close. I just personally don't like using scoped ARs. But uh, let me show you what that looks like here. I'm going to take this off. We'll put on the CQB SS scope, which is our 8x scope. Let's kind of give you an idea of what this will look like if you decide you want to play this scoped, or if you're, you're good at playing scoped ARs. I am not particularly great at playing with scoped ARs. Now, this is a little easier to hit when they're closer. I'm just going to bring it up to 10 here. You know, from 5 to 10 meters, this is a piece of cake. I'm just going to bring it up to 5, just so you can see that the zoom isn't so intense that you can't possibly hope to hit anything up close. It's not bad. And like I said, you get used to it. Um, you know, this build is, is optimized for solo heroic performance, but it does quite well in groups. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for legendary content or countdown. Uh, and honestly, you can switch out the FAMAS for virtually any AR that you feel like using. Um, you can run it with, you know, something like the Carbine 7. I know this is a, a fan favorite here. Um, and since you're running the, te the Technician specialization, uh, you can take advantage of the linked laser pointer. Uh, and you can run an AR with flatline. That's also an excellent choice. 
Uh, you can also switch out the Nemesis for a different sniper rifle. Uh, you just need to keep in mind that you'll need a Headhunter stack from a Veteran or Elite before you can start chaining one-shot headshots. Whereas with the Nemesis, you can one-shot right off the rip. And let me show you what that looks like. So set this at 15. And you can notice at the bottom of my screen that I have uh, zero damage buffs active right now. Right off the rip, headshot down. So Nemesis is the only one that can do that with this setup. Um, but let me just show you how well the Mantis does. This is my other favorite one. Let me get rid of the... Um, there we go. Got rid of the, the Headhunter stack there. So I'm going to get a Veteran headshot here, just to show you. All right, I've got the Veteran stack, and then we'll go to the Elite. And now you can chain until your heart's content. And this goes for pretty much any of the bolt action sniper rifles, whichever one is your preference. Um, you know, as for gear pieces, um, these are going to be really easy to farm for, or relatively easy to farm for. Um, as always, I always highly recommend using Countdown for farming purposes. Uh, now, the TDI card custom and Nemesis are going to be a little bit harder to come by. Let me put this back on here. Uh, the card is a DZ exclusive, but I got mine from a named item cache. I actually got several of these, and I think at one point it was actually for sale at the Countdown vendor. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I swear at one point it was on sale there. It's because I have multiple sitting in my vault, and I know I didn't get all those from a named cache. Uh, you can run a normal card 45 in place of the named variant. Um, just realize that the shield's going to be weaker, and the artificer won't heal as much. Um, but you will do more damage, because in place of the plus one skill tier uh, that this, this comes with, um, you can have like damage targets out of cover on there. Uh, and the Nemec Assist does require a quest to obtain, but I promise it's not hard. There are tons of videos on YouTube um, that'll show you how to get it, so I'm not going to be covering that here. But let me go ahead and show you the stats for these weapons. In case you're curious. So for the FAMAS, we're sitting at 21% critical hit chance, 69% critical hit damage, and 210% headshot damage. Uh, for the Nemesis, we're sitting at 25.5% critical hit chance, 74% critical hit damage, and 281% headshot damage. And then for the TDI card custom, we're sitting at 16% critical hit chance, 69% critical hit damage, and 243% headshot damage. Uh, one thing I want to mention on the card is for the mods, I have all headshot mods on here. I've got the headshot low reflex sight, I've got the headshot muzzle break, and I've got the, he the headshot uh, laser pointer. And then for the magazine, we're just going with some additional rounds. Uh, now, before I show you the damage numbers here in the, uh, in the range, let me give my expertise disclaimer. You can see that um, all three of my weapons have expertise on them. These are at 15, Nemesis is at 10, uh, my Bulwark Shield is at 15, and my Artificer is at 15 as well. So um, if you're getting different numbers from me, then that would be why. One thing I will say is that you absolutely need to get the Nemesis up to expertise level 10 in order to get the one-shot headshots without any stacks. Otherwise, just keep in mind, you'll need to collect a handful of Memento trophies or use Headhunter to chain elite kills with the Nemesis. So I kind of already showed off the Nemesis uh, and the FAMAS, so let me show off the TDI card custom. Shields deployed, I'm going to bring them up to 5, and again, this is without any stacks, so keep that in mind, that we're going to be gaining an additional 30% weapon damage when the memento stacks are all procced. And now I have a headhunter stack, and I can show you how quickly I can kill with the headhunter stack active. And that's before Memento. So let's go out into the open world. I'll show you how this works and kind of how to play it. And I'll kind of walk you through my uh, mentality while I'm playing it. We're going to go take my favorite checkpoint and kill anything along the way. This will be perfect. We've got ourselves a resource convoy.
So with this build, you can seamlessly switch between play styles. You can, you can hang back and snipe. You can get in their face and tank, uh, or you can fight at mid range from behind cover with the FAMAS and aim for the head. Important thing to keep in mind when playing with the Bulwark shield or any shield really is that positioning is everything. Um, if they start to flank you, they get off to your sides, they get behind you. It really doesn't matter how much armor you have, you're gonna go down in a hurry. Soften them up a little bit here. Generally, even though I am uh, running around with a bulwark shield deployed, you do want to stay close to cover in case you find yourself getting overwhelmed, not just out in the open, out of luck. You can find cover in a hurry, heal up, do whatever you need to do to get back in the fight. Oh, this guy was trying to flank. Ah, ah, ah. Give me these memento stacks. Oh, what do we have over here? Sure. Fight you too. You'll see that I have um, Optimist rolled on the TDI card instead of up close and personal. Reason being is I'm not limited to seven meter engagements like you would be with uh, up close and personal. And a lot of times I'm fighting at this range. I'm fighting at about 10 meters. Uh, so that talent is useless unless you're closer to the enemy. So just through trial and error, I landed on Optimist for the pistol, and it's worked out quite well. This guy's just wandering around here by himself. Hello, sir. Detecting additional hostile contacts. really want that trophy, but I also don't like fire. It's okay. It'll be okay. All right, let's head on over to the checkpoint. Remember to take the scope off the FAMAS? Nope, <laughs> I did not. All right, we're gonna put this on here real quick. So what I'm gonna try to show you here is transitioning from sniper to tank. We're gonna start off with a long range engagement and then we're just gonna get closer and closer. And hopefully not die because that would be embarrassing. Oh, looks like they're properly distracted. I like it. Bear witness to my mediocre sniping skills. They are very distracted. It's a whiff. Switch to the FAMAS here. Reinforcements going while we're doing this. Reinforcements incoming. They are very distracting. Hostile broadcast detected. Well, see, it would help if I could hit what I'm aiming at. There we go. Who are they fighting down there? Idea. They know I'm here now. And switching to Bulwark. Don't get close, I bite. Sorry for saying that. So we are now transitioning into tank mode. Oh, 
Oh, there is somebody to the side of me, so I'm going to back off a little bit here. Why well, your radar is very important. Let's survey the area here. Got a little red bar. Alright, switching to the FAMAS. Whoop! Pop my shield. Whoop, the corner here. No. no, don't put that down. Absolutely not. Yes, I do. Plate back up. Some FAMAS action here. Tell where his head was. There we go. Left us alone. You can see how we're just seamlessly switching between sniping and medium range and close range. And that is where this build shines. It's a jack of all trades. You have a lot of options. Where are you going? Let them deal with him. We're not even at halfway with the uh, memento stacks here, so we're gonna, just going to keep getting more powerful. I'm going to go ahead and nab these while they're dealing with the remnants here. Come to me, so I guess we're gonna go say hi. Hostile broadcast picked up. You know, as long as you're aiming for the head with this AR, you'll do just fine. If you start aiming for the body, it's gonna be rough. Because you have very little critical hit chance, critical hit damage. That was the headshot. Not being all herky jerkies. Want to get some crisp headshots here. No, I don't have a bunch of uh, headhunter procs going, so yeah, it's going to be two shots. Finish him off. It's, it's a pistol action here. I ain't got all day. All right. Well, that is the build. Let me grab a bunch of these. Let's see if we can get to full stacks here so I can show you the stats. Dude. 
this should get us enough, I think. Incoming backup request. You really came through for us. Thank you. I think so. Ah, we're not quite at max stacks here, are we? Let's see, is there something around us we can do? Yeah, we'll go do this. One more activity, let's do it. We're almost to max stacks here. guys they're going okay I thought they were coming towards us total damn fuck up if you ask me I found it what that side cover and I'll do it Grab all the stacks here. Perfect. All right, let me head back to base. We'll show you some stats. Pistol out. Oops. Bulwark. Twelve point six million HP. And uh, Tifficer, we're sitting at fifty six percent skill repair. Some damage numbers here. We're gonna set this to elite. Now we'll show the pistol first. I have a bunch of shock ammo on here, don't I? You know, six shots is about right. I don't think the shock rounds do that much damage. So, six shots once the headhunter proc is up. They're up to six. Go. And then with the FAMAS. This is with the... Um, this is not the 8x scope. This is just the critical hit chance scope, but you can zoom in with it, helping kind of with your headshots, so... There we go. And then the nemesis. Let's get full. Sitting at full. See if we can get that 44 million to show. There's 43 million. Really doesn't want to crit, does it? Come on now. Ooh, 45 million. All right. All right, well, you guys get the idea. Uh, if you stuck around to the end, I've got a bonus for you. Let me show you the outfit, the fashion show. So we've got the reconnaissance shirt on here. Uh, you can get that from the store. Let's see, it is part of, there it is, reconnaissance shirt right here, okay? It's part of the urban jungle. Uh, for the pants, we're running the True Sons pants. And that is part of, let's see, Ooh, here it is, invasion. True Sons, True Sons pants. 
All right, and then for the boots, we are running the Umbra Corporation Operative Boots. That is, oops, that is part of the Resident Evil event. It's this guy right here. Operative Boots. And then for the mask, it's the Black Balaclava, and that is by completing uh, an entire event, a uh, uh, peril event, and it is, is the, let's see, I believe, yes, here it is, the last resort. So if you have every piece of all four of these outfits, you'll get the black balaclava. Now, as for the gear itself, uh, I'm running the Keel Belly Guard. I believe that is, let me show you the brand. It is Wyvern Wear, Keel. Uh, for the holster, we're running the drop leg holster, and that is part of uh, Petrov Defense, right here. And then for the gloves, we are running the Wyvern Wear Savannah Field Gloves. To show you where they are, they're way at the bottom. Lots of clicking. There it is. Savannah Field Gloves. And uh, you can't customize the knees because they're built into the pants. And you can't customize the mask because you're wearing the balaclava. And then, of course, the backpack's the memento. You can't really change the appearance of the memento. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching. Like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And I'll see you all in the next one.